In this topic, we want to learn about cumulative frequency and cumulative relative frequency. Now, cumulative frequency is the sum of all previous frequencies up to and including the current class. And again, remember, class is the same thing as bin or group. Cumulative relative frequency, also known as cumulative percent, because percent is relative frequency, so you can do it that way, is the sum of all previous relative frequencies or percents up to and including the current class. You can write them as fractions, decimals, percentages, whatever is appropriate for the table that you have. Um, these values, by the way, are very important for the concept of percentile, which we'll cover in section 3.4. So when you have a percentile, it means this is the percent that's below you. So cumulative relative frequency in particular is very important for the concept of percentile. I'll kind of make a note right here. Adding relative frequencies or percents, depending on what data table you have. All right, so again with our Math 133 final exam data from 2018, I, I apologize, I have the wrong numbers in there, but I fixed them, so make sure you fix them to match that earlier example we have, because this is real data. <laughs> so these are the real um, final exam grades from, I think it was seven or eight classes of Math 133. All right, so now we want to find the relative frequency. Well, it would help if we knew the total, which I believe we found already, but we can find it again with a calculator. So 5 plus 8, right, I'm just adding the frequencies. And I find there to be 165 there. So this total down here is 165. Remember I said that the total call or total row is not always part of the um, table. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. But you can always tack it on kind of down below. All right, so what are the relative frequencies? Well, the relative frequencies would be each of those values, each of those frequencies, divided by that total of 165. Now we can grab a calculator and we can find that and we do it that way, which is fine. We'll just be typing for a while. It's lovely. So that particular one would be 0 0.030 if I'm gonna go three decimal places. But I would love it if the computer would just find this for me. <laughs> that would be great. Um, so I have here, oh, and on a side note, I actually already found the midpoints. So I can put those in. This particular um, problem, if you would like to look at it, is available under Math one, MAT133 final exam data. If you search for that, um, it's a publicly available data set with just the basics of the frequency. All right, so now we've done this before, but I'll do it again. So we want to go to data and we want to compute. So I'm just letting my mouse hover. I'm not clicking on anything. And then I go over to expression and now I'm ready to click. So I wanted to make an expression for me and I have to build it. And then I'm gonna choose round two because I want it to round. I don't want to give me all the decimal places. I'm not in the mood. So, and I want it to take the frequencies and I want it to divide by the sum of those frequencies, which was 165. Now, technically we already know what this is and could type in 165 if we wanted to, but I figured why not make StatCrunch do all the work for us? So it's gonna find that value and round it to three decimal places. And I say, okay. And then I want it to put that in the relative frequency column. And I click compute and there it is. 0 0.030, and I can see all the rest of them in a row. 0 0.048, 0 0.097. It's giving me all the values with minimal effort, which is nice. But again, if you want to use your calculator and just type them all, that's fine too, whatever. It all works. I figured I have StatCrunch, I might as well make take full advantage of it. Now, if we played our cards right, when we add up all these decimals, it should make one. I'll, I'll pause and I'll go double check it really quickly. One second. Yes, indeed. When I add those relative frequencies, it does make one. If it had made like 0.999, that wouldn't have bothered me because that's just rounding error because we rounded to the third decimal place. But it in fact made one. So even better. No troubles. All right. So that is review. We've already done this, but I just wanted to do it again. Now the cumulative frequency means I want to add. So I want to add the, the frequencies up. Cumulative means to add. Let me just make a note. Right, 
right? When you accumulate a lot of things, you're gathering them together. Cumulus clouds are the clouds that are really um, puffy and, and mush together, right? When you accumulate wealth, it means you're getting wealthy. So it means to add, right, in Latin. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the frequencies, okay? This is, this is not tricky, I promise. So the first one is five. Not, not a hard thing. But the next one is 13. How did I get there? I'm adding. I'm adding the frequencies, right? This over here is the frequencies. Number of is frequency. I, don't, I didn't call it frequency, but that's what it has to be. So 5 plus 8 makes 13. Now this next one will be 5 plus 8 plus 16. Those three together, which is 29. This next one would be these four together, right? So if I add up these four numbers, I get 54. Now you might be thinking, how is she doing that math so fast, right, without a calculator? And no, I didn't pause, I didn't need to, because I also know that these three numbers together make 29, and so I just need to take 29 and 25 and put them together. Well, 25 plus 25 makes 50, and then four more. Or you could grab a calculator, right? Nobody's stopping you. So if you want to have a calculator over here, so if you take 29 plus 25, see, 54. If you take 5 plus 8 plus 16 plus 25, ta -da, 54. So these four make 54. So when I add in that next one, it's going to be 86. Because 30 plus 50 is 80, and 4 plus 2 is 6. Or again, if you add up these five, so let me take this last thing I just typed. I'll go up to my up arrow, press enter, there it is, and now I add to it 32, enter, 86. Now I grab that thing again, let me, let me delete that out, go grab it, now I add to it 45, and it's 131, see, and then you do it again, <laughs> one more time, and then you add to it a 34, enter, and you get 165. They're your cumulative frequencies. See? So you can either think of it as adding up all of these, or the, the easy math way is to take like this number plus 34 makes 165. 86 plus 45 makes 131, and so on. Easy peasy. All right, now what about the cumulative relative frequencies? Well, again, cumulative means to add, but we're going to add up the relative frequencies. Now, you can do that. You can add the decimals and that's fine, but there's an easier way to do this. This right here is the cumulative frequency. So why don't you just take the cumulative frequency and divide it by the total? Oh, let me pick a different color. I'll do this one in blue. So five divided by 165. Sure, no problem, that's 0 0.030. But the next one is this cumulative frequency, 13 divided by 165, right? And then this next one would be 29 divided by 165. That'll actually be a little more accurate because if you do the decimals, if you add the decimals, you have will have a little bit of rounding error. If you take the cumulative frequencies and just divide by the total, you'll you won't have that rounding error. All right. Well, I could grab a calculator and do all of these, right? I could take a calculator and take 13 divide by 165. No problem. I could do that. Or I can have StatCrunch do it for me. Now the advantage to StatCrunch is that if I have StatCrunch do it, then if it's a really big table, then I don't have to worry about it so much, right? I can I can make it do all the work for me. This isn't that big of a table. There's only what seven rows, so it's not that big of a deal. Now I typed in the cumulative frequencies myself because I don't think there's an easy way to to compute that. But the cumulative relative frequency is not hard to do. So I'm going to go to data, compute, expression. I'm going to build a new one. And then I'm going to round to, it's going to be very similar to the other one. I'm going to round to, okay, and then I want it to take the cumulative frequency and I divide by, and I could say the sum of the frequencies, right, which is 165, or I can just type 165. I know what they make, right? It's your choice. And I want to do three decimal places and say, okay. And then I want to store this in cumulative rel 
freak. I'm just going to abbreviate it a little bit and say, okay. And there they are. 0.03, which we already knew. 0.079, which matches what the calculator just gave me. 0.079, because the nine or seven rounds the eight up and so on and so forth. So I can write all these numbers down. And I am. And the beautiful thing about StatCrunch is, of course, if you have the formula correct, then it finds all of them nice and quickly and easily. No muss, no fuss. But again, you don't have to, if, if you don't want to use StatCrunch, you can totally use a calculator, whichever way you like, to find all those values. Now you'll notice at the end, there's something a little bit interesting here. Down here at the end, we have that same number, 165. And down here at the end, oh, grab a highlighter, right here is the same value as right here. Interesting, huh? Which, of course, that makes sense because this is the sum of the frequencies, but so must this be the sum of the frequencies. So we'll just make a little note. Um, I'll have to add it down here. The sum of the frequencies, so when I add the frequencies, that's the same thing as the last row value of the cumulative frequency column. Right. Similarly, the sum of the relative frequencies, I'm just going to abbreviate that, right, that guy right there. So this one was the orange piece. Right, so note number one is the sum of the orange piece, right, that orange circle. And the sum of the relative frequencies is equal to the last, well, it's equal to one. Um, last row value of the cumulative relative frequencies. And that must always be one. Or you can write it as 100% if you're using it as a percentage rather than as um, a decimal like we are in this particular problem. So that's that piece right there. So just a little note. All right, now I said that this was useful for percentiles and I wanted to show you what I meant. So what percentage of students scored less than 79.9? Right, so 79.9% or below on that final. Okay, so if you were gonna do that here, you'd have to add up all of them here and then divide by 165. Bleh. Or you could add up all the decimals. But the beautiful thing is it's already added for you right here. See that value? So what percentage of students scored 79.9 or below it's right there, it's 52.1%. It's given to you in that cumulative relative frequency. So this answer is right here. So let me star it. Right. Just make a little note. Right. That is why that is so useful. So you can say, hey, if I scored 79.9, I'm in the 52nd percentile. 52% of students scored below my score. Right? You can imagine why that's a useful thing to know for things like exams or heights of children, right? that kind of thing. If you've ever had a child in a pedi pediatrician's office, you know what I'm talking about. Because they always want to know, you know, is your child in the 80th percentile or the 60th percentile, that kind of thing. And that last column gives that to you. So you could say right here, cumulative relative frequency is giving percentiles. And that's a handy thing to know for future reference. This one right here. 